Hi there. Welcome back to Vapor Road and another Wicking Wednesday. This week we're going to be taking a look at a little bit older of an atomizer. Today we're going to be looking at the Bulk RTA by Umie. Great atomizer if built properly, but it can be a little finicky to wick. And the reason is it has wicking channels instead of wicking ports. What do I mean by that? Let's dive down and take a look. So, we jump down here to the close-up camera. This is the build deck for the Umie Bulk. Let me see if I can dim this camera just a little bit. Not quite as much of a glare on there. This right here is what I mean by a wicking channel instead of a wicking port. The difference is it's open on the outside. There is nothing for you to tuck your cotton behind. Your cotton simply rests within this little cutout here, and then your chamber goes on. Some people will struggle with this type of wicking situation. I assure you, it is not difficult. We're going to walk through it together. So, these are the coils that I've designed for the bulk RTA by Umie. These are Tricore fused Claptons. And I find they work really, really well. So, these are three millimeter inner diameter. I'm gonna slide that onto our coiling rod. Bring our Addy in here. And when I tell you my coils are tailor built that's what i mean they just slide right in to the post holes they are the perfect size and shape now the way i build the bulk is you'll notice the coils have what we call lay flat legs and what that means is those legs line up in perfect parallel with one another allowing the coil to lay flat i like to install the coils with the coil itself facing down from the legs. Okay? Just like that. Now, you'll see that that makes it ride very low in the deck. That's okay. Trust me, this is going to work great. This atomizer requires a little bit of patience when it comes to building it. Now, before we go further, I want to show you these, these large holes down here. This is not where your coil goes. This is where your air comes out. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit without giving you motion sickness. There we are. Now, as I said, these holes are where air enters the chamber. These holes are where your coil legs go. See that? So, let's see here. Let's make sure our coil screw, our post screws are backed out all the way. We're just gonna grab one of these coils and slide it in right there. Dim that camera back down a bit so it's not killing you. This this silver deck gives one hell of a glare. Hold that one out of the way. And then we'll slide this one in. Now, in order to get them to both lay in there properly, it takes a little bit of maneuvering. There we are, and see if we loosen that post screw up a little, that would fall right down in there. 
that side is not wanting to cooperate. Of course, since I'm on a wicking video, it wants to give me a hard time, right? Grab my tweezers, and there it went. Now, it's, it's a fairly tight fit in there, guys, but I promise it works well when it's done, okay? So, if we look here, we will see those coils are almost touching each other. They are touching the bottom of the airflow. That's not going to work, but trust me, just tighten the post screws down now. We're going to adjust those coils up in order to correct that. And when we do, everything is going to space out perfectly. So that one's nice and tight. That one's nice and tight. Now, again, great design work here. Here's where the ends of your coil legs would come out. I pre-cut my coil legs at 5 millimeters so that I would not have to cut them off. 5 millimeters allows your post screw to bite down onto it very well, but the leg doesn't escape out the hole. So if we hold this thing on the side here, you can see no coil sticking, no leg sticking out here or here. Okay. And as you can see, those coils look pretty gnarly in there. That's okay. Slide our coiling rod in, lift it up off the airflow. Same thing over here. Just lift it up off the airflow. And now, see how easy that was? Now those things look just about perfect <clears throat> with just that slight adjustment. Give it just a little bit more. Try to get this just perfect in here. And there we have it. There they are, installed and positioned properly. Now as you can see, if I get my little pointer here, that airflow hole is directly underneath this side of the coil. And when it comes up, it's going to force air around this way and around this way on both sides. Airflow comes out right under here. Some of that air is going to come around this side of the coil. Some of it's going to be drawn around this side of the coil. This is going to give us superior flavor. Just that simple, guys. Getting them both into the deck can be a little bit of a pain in the butt because it's a tight area. But by keeping them low to the airflow and compressed in the chamber, you get much better flavor. Okay? So now we have them installed. Let's get them bedded in. We're going to be using a DNA. Vapor Road program. We are on the Bed Duels program. And this is showing a 0.115. They actually spec at 0.12, which is what it's showing now. So they're specking out perfectly so far. In Bed Duels, I'm going to bed these guys in at 30 watts. Now, I want to address something because just recently, I had somebody ask me how I get such wonderful color out of my coils. Well, part of that is my outer wrap is always stainless steel. I oftentimes do build hybrid coils so they could have stainless steel, nichrome 80, nichrome 90, or even canthal cores, but my outer wrap is nearly always stainless. This provides a good clean flavor. It doesn't give a metallic taste to my juice and stainless also creates beautiful colors but the way I get even coloring this one might show us we're gonna see if they if they begin coloring out evenly or not and if they don't I'll show you a little trick to get perfect coloring every time again this is 30 watts I'm strumming right down the center so I'm actually strumming both coils at once 
I'll press it a little, and then I'll let off and let the coil absorb that heat. Now, you see, I'm getting a little hotter here than I am here. So, let me show you my little trick. I'm just going to slide my coiling rod in and back out. What that did is absorb some of the heat out of this coil into that rod. So now this coil is just a little cooler than this one. That will allow this coil over here to catch up. Let's give them a little pinch, make sure those wraps are nice and tight. And now you can see they're coloring very evenly. See that? We got this one spot that's a little bit lighter blue because it heated before everything else. But now they are heating at the same time. All I did was slide my coiling rod into the coil that was getting hotter faster and then slide it right back out. It absorbed some of the heat out of the coil into the rod and now that coil is slightly cooler than the other one, allowing the other one to catch up. Our coils are still very well positioned. Everybody see that? Everything's looking good. While those cool down, we'll go ahead and get our cotton ready. As nearly always, we will be using 13 feet cotton. And all I do here is take it right on the end, pinch both fingers together, and split it right down the middle. Give it a little pull and twist to get it kind of smoothed out a little bit. There's that one ready. There's that one ready. Just that simple. Let's bring this guy back in here. Coils are starting to cool off nicely now. Also, guys, if you want to cool your coils more quickly, you can slide your coiling rod in. Leave it in there for a second. Pull it out. It will literally absorb the heat out of those coils. When you pull it out, you can feel the heat in the coiling rod. The coils are much cooler to the touch now. It will not cool them all the way, but it will help them cool a little faster. There we go. So, quick little pinch and twist. Let's zoom this back out a little bit. Yeah, I think that's good. There we are. Slide that in there. That looks nice. get that cotton nice and twisted up on the end make it easy to pass through now these coils are pretty close together so I'm actually going to hold this wick tail around here so that when I pull through this one doesn't grab that one trying to drag it into the same coil because that can happen when your coils are very very close together like these are I keep them this close together because number one it gives better flavor number two it helps to smooth out the airflow I like a very, very smooth airflow, and this one gives it if you run your coils like this. Now, here's another one. How do I know how long to cut the cotton? I get this all the time. So I'm going to show you. If I lay the mod on its side, and I rest my scissors right there where I want the end of that cotton, okay? Now, I can pull my cotton down. And that's where I'm going to cut it. Did y'all see that? Now, if I lay it over, it goes through the deck, but not quite all the way to the sub deck. And that's actually a touch long on the top there from the angle I had it on. Let 
There we go. That's a little better. You can try the edge of the deck here, and you can see it would have been the same spot. But if you don't know, I love the, the method of simply folding your cotton over where it will be. And when you don't have a port, you have a channel, you can easily do that. See how that works? You just lay the cotton over where it's going to be. You do not want your cotton to touch this flat deck down here. You just need it to get through this metal plate here. That's it. As long as it gets into this metal plate, you're good. It does not need to touch this bottom plate. And in fact, if it does touch that bottom plate, it is going to restrict your wicking a lot. So, cut this one, same length. There we go. Now, people say, wait a minute, you always do one at a time. Well, guys, there's, again, there's no ports here. There's nothing to tuck this cotton into. It's literally just going to lay down. Now, how do we get it to lay down? and remain laying down. Well, I'll tell you. We're going to grab some lime margarita from Vapor Road, and we are going to prime these coils before we do anything else with our cotton. This is called wet wicking. It's when you work your wicks with them already wet. Wet wicking is the easiest way to work wicks in a channel situation as opposed to a port situation. You do not need much liquid in that cotton, but just a little bit of liquid on that cotton will make that cotton tend to stay where you put it a little bit easier. Okay, coils are properly primed, and I've got just a little bit of liquid on the cotton itself. I'm just going to start working it towards that channel Mainly on the sides, I want to get it tucked in right there behind that little hook. You see that? I want to get that done on both sides. Patience is key here, guys. You want to let that e-liquid you just put on there soak into that cotton so that it'll stay where you want it. If you put too much e-liquid on it, it's just going to be very messy to work with. There we have it. Now it's it's naturally remaining in that groove. We're going to do the same thing over here. First one side, then another. I'm essentially compressing the cotton, so I don't want to compress it any more than I need to, just to get it to lay inside that little groove. That's it. If I compress it too much, this thing will start giving dry hits. And we certainly don't want that. Now, I know what you're thinking. That cotton's sticking out way too far. It is, but this barrel section is going to lay it down for me. So, when I push down like that and let those threads bite, I feel no cotton in those threads. Okay? You all see that cotton there? It's not moving. It's not bunching up. Right? That tells me it's not in those threads. Barrel screws on perfectly. Cotton is exactly where it should be. I can barely see my cotton poking through right there. Okay? Barely see it. Don't see a lot of cotton. Don't need to see a lot of cotton. Don't want to see a lot of cotton. Now, as always, if it's your first time with an atomizer or you've been struggling with an atomizer, don't throw it all the way up. Leave room so that if you need to turn this thing over, and open it up, there's room for your liquid to settle so that you can open it up without making a mess. Put that top back on there. Let's jump up top and see how this thing works. All right, so you'll notice I did not immediately start vaping on this. A lot of times, especially with ports after you wick it and after you prime it that cotton is fully saturated then when you fill it up the weight of liquid going in begins a a siphon type scenario the weight of the liquid going in pushes more liquid into the wick pushes more liquid into the coil the coil starts flooding 
with this way, you'll notice the ends of my cotton were, for the most part, dry. Inside the coil was saturated, and there was enough liquid in the, the rest of the cotton to get it to kind of compress and go where I wanted it, but I didn't really saturate it. This gives time so that when I fill it up and everything, it's now priming itself. That's going to prevent me from getting any leaks. Now I'm going to go to my duals profile. Still measuring at a 0.12, which is perfect. I'm going to start this off at 55 watts. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, that's great. One thing I like about these coils is they're extremely low mass. To be a dual coil build, this one actually has a very, very low metal mass. Now, how low? Okay, this is a large, the bulk is a 28 millimeter. This is a large dual coil build, and you saw those coils... They were, um, they were chunky. Let's see if I can do this real quick. I'm going to throw this on a single cell mod. This is the Asmodus Almighty. 55 watts on a single battery. Yeah. Still reading at a perfect 0.12, so my build is stable and doing good. That's the other thing, by running them with the coil down from the legs, it makes the installation of them a little tricky because they're they're trying to bump on each other as you're putting them in because they have to slide in on an angle. And this the first one's always going to be kind of in the way when you get that second one in there. But by doing that, you keep your coils low to the airflow and away from the top of that chamber. You don't have to worry about any soft shorts or anything like that. I'm already getting really, really great flavor off of it. You can hear, this is one of those odd atomizers that has three air intakes on the base instead of two. A lot of times when you have that, you can look at it and know, okay, this one's going to be a little loud. Listen to this. I can certainly hear it. But it's not as loud as a lot of other atomizers I've had. This one's not loud enough to annoy me in any way. And even though you have three air inlets coming into essentially four air inlets, two under each coil, in a large sub-deck atomizer, it's not no turbulence. Because keeping those coils low right over that airflow intake smooths out your air. As soon as it comes into the chamber, it starts wrapping around those coils, killing any turbulence you may have had. I'm going to go ahead and kick this up to 65. And 65 is about where I like this one. Like I said, they're very low mass coils. They don't require an awful lot of power to run. They can stand up to an awful lot of power. I have run this same build at 85 to 100 watts easily, and the coils can take it. And the wicking can keep up as long as you wicked it right. But they don't need that much power. You can see plenty of flavor or vapor production on this one. Flavor is phenomenal on it when you build it right. I will tell you, if you decide to go coil up instead of coil down from a lay flat leg scenario, you may be tempted to go with three and a half millimeter inner diameter coils because you're thinking more coil, more surface area, more surface area, more vapor, more vapor, more flavor. All of these things are perfectly true. There's two things you need to watch out for. If you run coil up in the bulk watch out for soft shorts that is not an extremely tall chamber though it looks like it. it's really not you can easily get a soft short on your coil against the top of the chamber wall if you're going to do that when you first put your chamber on recheck the resistance reading make sure it's reading the same thing it was without the chamber on it if the resistance changes you've got metal touching metal somewhere you need to take a look at your build the other thing when you use more cotton all too often it's very very easy to wick the bulk too heavy, and it will dry hit on you. 
do it like I showed you, half a piece of 13 feet. Don't bunch it up too tight. Leave it nice and, and fluffy out there on the sides. Just get the sides tucked in so that when you put the chamber down, it's forced into the place. As soon as you start threading those threads, listen and feel for any cotton that's biting in the threads. If you don't feel any um, resistance to your threads, you're good. There you can see my little bubbles forming, getting ready to pop out from under that deck. Wicking like a champ. They're not rolling up yet, but they will. Uh, most people I know use the bubble glass on the bulk. When I first got the bulk, I wanted to use the straight glass. Bubble glass was stuck on the O-ring, and I actually broke bubble glass. This is one of the only glasses I've ever broken of all of my atomizers, all my years of vaping. With the bubble glass, these bubbles roll out right away. With the straight glass, it does take them a little bit of time before the production. That's really about all I've got on the bulk. Um, I hope this video may have helped you if you were struggling with this one. I know a lot of people do struggle with those wicking channels as opposed to wicking ports. That's how I do it. I get the wick, the cotton a little bit wet, tuck the sides in, and let the chamber take care of the rest. So I'm not over compressing that cotton and getting dry hits. Um, there comes that air bubble now. Now that all the air bubbles have joined together, it will roll up as one large bubble. I hope this video has helped you. If you found it helpful, please give me a thumbs up. Um, if you need any more help, if you have any questions or anything, please feel free to leave me a comment down below in the comment section and look in the description and you'll find a link to my Facebook profile where you can PM me. If you want, if you're interested in the coils and the juice, anything you see in my videos I offer, best way to get in touch with me is via PM on Facebook. There's also a link to my Facebook group, Vapor Road Crew, where we're a vape group and we just talk anything and everything vape. So that's about all I've got for you this week for Wicking Wednesday on the Umie Bulk RTA. I hope it was helpful. Until next time, guys, vape happy, vape safely, and let's keep it cloudy.